Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So continuing our discussion about antibiotics, we already talked about the penicillin and now we are shifting our discussion into cephalosporins. Cephalosporins have the beta-lactam ring in their structure, same as the penicillin does, but they are more resistant to the beta-lactamase enzyme secreted by the bacteria, so they would have broader spectrum than the penicillin does. And we have two videos about the cephalosporins. This one is going to be about the cephalosporins generations, and the next video is going to be about the cephalosporins pharmacology. So let's start. So regarding cephalosporins generations, they are classified into five generations according uh, to the uh, spectrum of the antimicrobial activity. So we would have five generations, first, second, third, and fourth, and fifth. And those will be explained, uh, each of them is going to be explained in the next slides. Let's start by talking about the first generation of the cephalosporins. So the agents of this generation, uh, drugs or agents, include the cephaloxine uh, and the cephradine and the cefadroxyl. Cefa Droxyl, and we also have the cefazoline or cefazoline and cephalothine. So, regarding the pharmacokinetic of the first generation, uh, those are available as oral formulas mostly, so available as oral and we have only one drug that is available as intravenous, which is the cefazoline. Cefazoline available as intravenous. And most of them are available as oral. Uh, also in the pharmacokinetic regarding the distribution, those, are, those can't pass the blood-brain barrier. Those can't pass the blood-brain barrier, even in meningitis. So they don't, they are not used in treating meningitis uh, because of that cause. Uh, and regarding the excretion of the uh, first generation cephalosporins, they are excreted uh, renally, renally excreted. Uh, let's talk about the spectrum of the first generation cephalosporins. So they are active against uh, mostly or mainly uh, the gram positives. Example would be the mesocillin sensitive Staphylococcus aureus and other bacteria, mainly gram positives. And they are active against a few gram negatives. So a few uh, gram negatives. Example would be uh, Klebsiella pneumonia bacteria. Klebsiella pneumonia, and they are active against a uh, few anaerobes. Anaerobes, example would be Proteus mirabilis. Uh, and they are uh, not active against Pseudomonas. So not active against Pseudomonas. Regarding the Pseudomonas, we have the third and fourth generation cephalosporins are active against Pseudomonas, other generations are not active. The first generation cephalosporins are less resistant to beta-lactamase enzyme than other generations of the, the cephalosporins. So they are less resistant to beta-lactamase enzyme, beta-lactamase compared to other generations, compared to 
other generations. Regarding the therapeutic uses of the first generation of the cephalosporins, therapeutic uses, they are used in treating urinary tract infections. They also used to treat cellulitis and soft tissue abscess, soft tissue abscess that's caused by streptococci or uh, staphylococci because they are uh, very good with the gram-positive infections. Uh, they are not used for serious infections, not used uh, for serious infections because we have other uh, generations and other lines that are stronger than the first generation cephalosporins, so serious infections. Uh, the cefazolin, which is the only parenteral drug in this group, is used for surgical prophylaxis. So cefazolin for surgical prophylaxis. Uh, regarding the adverse effects of the first generation cephalosporins, uh, we have high cross allergy with penicillin. So high cross allergy with uh, penicillin. So if the patient is allergic to penicillin, they are also allergic to first generation cephalosporin. And if the patient have severe allergy from uh, penicillin, like they have anaphylaxis uh, before in the history of the patient, we don't give them the first generation of the cephalosporins. That, th this is also applies to the second generation of the cephalosporins. The other adverse effect of the first generation cephalosporin is the nephrotoxicity, and this is uh, only in the first generation cephalosporins. They, they are only, they are the only generation that cause nephrotoxicity. Uh, this is a picture of the cifradine, and here we have a picture of the uh, cefadroxyl. Uh, now let's talk about the second generation of the cephalosporins. So the, the drugs or the agents of this generation uh, include the cefoxetine and the cefotitan, and those are both from the cefamycin group. Cefamycin. Uh, the cefamycins are drugs that have similar structure to the cephalosporins and they are considered cephalosporins by most books and cefoxetine and cefotitan are members of this group and they are, uh, they are included in the second generation of the cephalosporins. Uh, the, the advantage of those, drug, of those drugs is that they have good anaerobic spectrum. Uh, other agents of the first generation cephalosporins uh, include the cefuroxime. So cefuroxime, this is the most used member of the second generation cephalosporins. The other member we have is the cefachlor. We also have the cefabroxyl, cefabroxyl and the cefornide. Uh, regarding the pharmacokinetics of the second generation, so pharmacokinetics, uh, those drugs are available as oral and IV forms, so oral and, and IV, and those drugs uh, can't cross the blood brain barrier, so can't cross the blood brain barrier same as with the first generation but in the second generation we have exception except cefuroxime it can pass the blood brain barrier uh, but the cefuroxime is not as effective as the ceftriaxone in treating meningitis ceftriaxone is from the third generation and it is 
uh, better than the severe eczema in, tra in treating meningitis. We also have in the pharmacokinetics is that the second generation cephalosporins is renally execrated. So renal, renally execrated. Uh, regarding the spectrum of the uh, second generation cephalosporins, so spectrum, uh, they work on uh, mainly gram positives. Uh, same with the with the first generation, uh, but they also work on uh, some gram negatives. Better gram negative spectrum than the first generation, but they are still uh, weak on the gram negatives. Uh, one of the bacteria that is gram negative and is uh, treated by the second generation is the Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea. This is one example. They also work on the anaerobes, and that's mainly by the cephamycins. The cephamycins work on anaerobes, cefoxetin and cefotitan, those are both cephamycins, and they will work on the anaerobes. Uh, now let's talk about the therapeutic uses of the uh, second generation cephalosporins. So therapeutic uses. They are used to treat uh, beta-lactamase secreting hemophilus influenza. So beta-lactamase hemophilus uh, influenza and also Morgzilla cataralis. M. cataralis. And they are used in treating uh, sinusitis, otitis, and lower uh, respiratory tract infections. And cefamycins are used to treat uh, mixed infections like pelvic inflammatory disease and peritonitis and diverticulitis. So cefamycins for uh, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, diverticulitis, uh, and uh, peritonitis. Uh, so regarding the adverse effects of the second generation cephalosporins, uh, adverse uh, effects, they cause uh, they only have high uh, cross allergy with penicillin. Same as the uh, first generation, if the patient have allergy from penicillin, they most likely also have uh, cross allergy from the, cephalos the second generation cephalosporins. Here we have some pictures of the second generation cephalosporins. Here we have the cefuroxime. This is the most used second generation uh, cephalosporin. And here we have the cefachlor uh, also. Uh, now let's talk about the third generation uh, cephalosporins, the agents of this generation or the drugs. Uh, they include the uh, cefotaxim, cefotaxim, the c 4 prazone and the ceftriaxone. They also include the cefixim. This is an oral drug of the third generation. And they also include the uh, the cefpodoxine, cefpodoxine and the ciftazidine, ciftazidine. Uh, regarding the pharmacokinetics of the third generation, so pharmacokinetics, uh, they are available as oral and IV formulas. We have the cefixime available as oral, and the rest are mostly available as intravenous. So available, 
as oral IV. And they cross the blood-brain barrier, cross blood-brain barrier, except for the cifoprazone, except for cifoprazone. Because of the higher molecular weight, this drug can't cross the blood-brain barrier. So because they cross the blood-brain barrier, the treat meningitis and the drugs that used to treat meningitis from this group are the cefotaxime and the ceftriaxone. Treat meningitis. They are biliary and renally excreted. So biliary through the bile and renally through the kidney. We have the cefoprazone is ex excreted by the biliary route only. So cefoprazone, uh, biliary excreted. So regarding the spectrum of the third generation cephalosporins spectrum, they are mainly work on the gram negatives. So mainly gram negatives. So with the, with the spectrum, as you can see, in the first and second generation, they are mostly uh, working on the gram positives and some gram negatives, but in the third generation, this would flip and the third generation would work on the gram negatives more than the gram positives. So mainly gram negatives and some gram positives. Some gram positives. We have the ceftazidine and the cefoprazone work on the pseudomonas. So ceftazidine and cefoprazone Uh, work on Pseudomonas and the third generation cephalosporins are more resistant to uh, beta-lactamase enzyme. So more resistant to beta-lactamase. So with the beta-lactamase resistance, as we saw, we have the first generation, it is less resistant the second generation is more resistant than the first generation. The third generation is more resistant than the first uh, two generations. And with higher the generation, the higher resistance to be the beta-lactamase enzyme. So for the therapeutic uses of the third generation uh, cephalosporins, they have a lot of the therapeutic uses, uh, but those are some of them. So we have the cefixime, used for urinary, urinary tract infections, cefixime for urinary tract infections. We have the ceftriaxone used for gonococcal infections, ceftriaxone for the gonococci. And we have the cefotaxime and the ceftriaxone used for the meningitis. Uh, finally, regarding the adverse effects, uh, we have low cross allergy with penicillin. So low cross allergy with penicillin. Uh, with the cross allergy to penicillin, as we saw, the first uh, two generations, the first and second generations have high cross allergy with penicillin but the third generation have low cross allergy with penicillin because of the complex uh, structure of this third generation. This make this generation low cross allergy with penicillin. And here we have some pictures of the third generation cephalosporins. Here we have the ceftriaxone. It is the most famous agent of the third generation cephalosporin. And here we have the cefotaxime and uh, this is the cefixime. It is the only 
member that that is available as oral uh, formula and here we have the CYP4 uh, doxine. Uh, now let's talk about the fourth generation of the cephalosporins. Uh, the agent of this generation uh, would be the cefepime. Uh, regarding the pharmacokinetics of the fourth generation, so pharmacokinetics, uh, those are available as intravenous only and uh, they can cross the blood-brain barrier uh, and they are excreted renally, so renal excretion. So regarding the spectrum of the uh, fourth generation spectrum, those are good with the gram positives and they also are good with the gram negatives. They also are good with the anaerobes and they work on the pseudomonas. So they are basically good with everything. And they are uh, very resistant to the beta-lactamase enzyme. Resistant to beta-lactamase. They are more resistant than the first three generations of the cephalosporins. Uh, now for the clinical or the therapeutic uses of the fourth generation cephalosporins. Therapeutic uses. They are good or active against enterobacteria C. Enterobacteria C. Those include E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, and other bacteria. They also uh, good against uh, Haemophilus influenza uh, and good against Pseudomonas. They also good as empirical therapy, so good as empirical therapy because they work well with uh, all uh, the bacteria, the gram positives, the gram negatives, the anaerobes, so they would uh, act as a good empirical agent, so good as empirical therapy. Regarding the adverse effects of the uh, fourth generation cephalosporins, adverse effects. They have a low cross allergy with penicillin, low cross allergy, same as the third generation. Because their structure is complex and they are not nephrotoxic, not nephrotoxic. Again, nephrotoxicity is limited to the first generation cephalosporins only. The other generations are not nephrotoxic. This is here a picture of the fourth generation cephalosporin, the CIFI beam uh, here, and also this is another picture of the CIFI beam. Now let's talk about the fifth generation of the cephalosporins. The fifth generation also called advanced generation in some books. So the agent of the fifth generation is the siftaroline, siftaroline, and regarding the pharmacokinetic, pharmacokinetics, and uh, the fifth generation is available as intravenous only, and it is excreted renally. So regarding the spectrum of the fifth generation cephalosporins, uh, they are active against MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. They are also active against resistant uh, strains of uh, enterococci, resistant strains of enterococci, and they have the same a broad spectrum uh, of the gram negatives as the ciftriaxone. So same gram negative spectrum as 
uh, ceftriaxone, which is a wide gram negative spectrum. And they are not active against Pseudomonas and resistant strains of Enterobacteria C. So, not active uh, against Pseudomonas and resistance resistant Enterobacteria C. Uh, regarding the therapeutic uses of the fourth generation, they are used for skin and uh, soft tissue infections that are caused by MRSA and they are used for uh, endocarditis, uh, meningitis and osteomyelitis uh, caused by uh, resistant bacteria, especially the MRSA. And finally, we have a comparison between the different generations of the cephalosporins. So here regarding the agents of each generation, and here we have the most used agents of each generation. So the first generation, the cefaloxine, cefradine, cefadroxyl, the second generation, cefoxetine, cefuroxime, cefachlor, the third generation, ceftriaxone, cefoprazone, cefotaxime, and the fourth generation, the cefipim, and the fifth is the ceftaroline. Uh, regarding the penetration of the cerebrospinal fluid, the first generation does not, and the second generation also does not accept the cefuroxime. The third generation uh, crossed the cerebrospinal fluid except for the cefoprazone. The fourth generation crossed, the fifth generation also crossed. Regarding the excretion, all of the uh, generations are excreted renally, except for the third generation is excreted by renal route and biliary route. Uh, so regarding the spectrum, the, fir the first generation is mainly gram positives and a few gram negatives and, and erupts. The second generation is same as the first generation, so it would have mainly gram positives, but it have better gram negative spectrum. So some gram negatives and, and erupts. The, thir the third generation would the flip, so we would have mainly gram negatives, including pseudomonas, and the fourth generation is wide gram positives and negative and anaerobes, including pseudomonas. Uh, and regarding the fifth generation, it would have an excellent gram neg positives and negatives, including the resistant strains of the MRSA, and it does not affect the pseudomonas. Uh, now regarding the beta lactamase susceptibility, the first generation is the le is the uh, have less resistant to beta lactamase. The second generation have uh, more resistant than the first generation, but less resistant than the third generation. The third generation is more resistant than the first two. The fourth generation is even more resistant, so it is more resistant than the first three, and the fifth generation is the most resistant. Uh, and regarding the cross allergy with the penicillin, the first generation is high, the second generation is also high, the third and fourth and fifth generation have low cross allergy with penicillin because of their uh, co complex structure. And with that, we'll reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching and see you in next video. Peace.